Now this is the first of two videos where I'm going to talk about the algebra of inequalities. It's covered here in the inequalities section and it's also covered in the absolute value section of the book, absolute value equations and inequalities video. For the most part what you're going to see on the ACT is the stuff we're covering here. But the slight majority of absolute value questions are based on inequalities. So somewhat more than half. When we talk about the inequalities questions, setting aside absolute value, that we see on the ACT, they kind of fall into two broad categories. There's the solve an inequality category, so it's just like solving an equation. And then there's the make an inequality question. Now, solving an inequality is just like solving a single variable equation. Now, these are really always going to probably be linear and kind of look something like this, okay? They can add some twists to it, you know, a little extra kickers at the end and stuff, but really the bulk of these problems are based around you being able to rearrange and solve this. So to solve an inequality, I want to treat this this inequality sign just like it's an equal, except for one key difference, and we'll get to that in a second. Just like in a, a single variable equation, what I want to do is combine all the like terms, get my numbers over here, my variable over here, or vice versa, and that's it. Just make sure I have no coefficient in front of my x except for a 1, right? So let's do that. So let's subtract 20, and I'm going to have negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 12. Of course, remember, the little line on the bottom means can be equal to. Uh, no line means can't be. So now I've got negative 3x less than or equal to negative 12. So obviously, I need to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Great. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing that they'll likely test you on if you see one of these. When you divide by a negative number and you've got an inequality, you flip the inequality. So this less than equals to flips around and becomes greater than equal to. We divide by negative 3, we'll get 4, uh, 4 and x. So whenever I flip the sign of the variable, I flip this variable from a negative to a positive. I flip the sign of the variable, I'm going to flip the inequality. Dividing by a negative, flip the inequality. That's how this is going to work. Now, there are some fancier things that can go on. Most of those you'll see in the absolute value stuff. But that's really the bulk of what you need to know. Let's talk about making an inequality. Now to start with, check out the book section on making an equation because that inequality stuff is covered in there as far as the terminology they may use to indicate that and so on and so forth. I will say this, however. It's very likely that you can run into an inequality question and solve it and get it correct and be comfortable with it and not even realize it's an inequality question. Sometimes these inequality questions are just almost invisible because we don't even really think about them as algebra problems. In fact, they may require little or no algebra at all. A classic example is if somebody needs 90 pens and pens only come in cases of 24, how many pens do they need? Another Red Book example is if there's 20 people and there's 10 booths and no booth is unoccupied in a restaurant, no booth is unoccupied, what's the most... Uh, what's the highest number of booths that can have four people sit at them? Well, that's actually an inequality question, but you may not solve it that way. You may just kind of picture it, right? Figure it out. So it's great if you can do that. I, I think, though, that um, don't stress too much identifying inequalities as long as you're comfortable with another way to do it. But whenever you're looking at mo maximum and minimum, you're going to be dealing with an inequality, and those are keywords you can use to figure that out. And of course, like in this problem, you may just be told straight out by the answer choices you're dealing with an inequality. Let's go ahead and tackle this problem. So there's 100 senators, and they need at least minimum two-thirds of the vote. Okay. Well, we can find that by no special tricks. We'll use the percent formula, right? So... Check out that video too, or that series of videos. Part equals percent times whole. It's the easiest way to use it, I think. 
And our percent is actually going to be a fraction here, two-thirds times 100, and that's going to equal 66.66, and that's going to repeat forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay. So now we've got two-thirds is equal to, of the senators of votes is equal to um, 66.66 repeated. We can construct two inequalities that would be correct here. Now, you've already realized this, I'm almost certain, but you can't have 0.66666 of a senator. You can't have two thirds of the senator. This is a great opportunity for a bad political joke, but I don't have one. So you can't have two thirds of a senator. So it's gotta be 67, right? You have to have 67 votes because you have to round up, right? So you can write it this way, right? Votes is greater than or equal to 67, but you could also write it this way. Votes is greater than 66. You look and see which one's correct. This one shows up. And by the way, this one is much more likely to show up. This is a little bit of the obtuse answer. Let's talk a little bit more about this rounding up thing. Now, the ACT is usually pretty calm with this. They're usually not going to give you something where you kind of have to blah, round up or round down. Usually the stuff that you would round up or round down ought to be rounded up or down anyway. But even if, let's say this, this wasn't 66.6, let's say it was 66.0001, it would still be 67 votes that you need. Why? Because you need at least two thirds. This would be slightly, 66 would be slightly under two thirds, right? Let's say if, if this is exactly two thirds, 66 is slightly under. So you have to go to 67. That maximum minimum concept underpins a lot of these make and inequality questions. Not only does it signal them, it underpins them. They usually don't get too fancy with it. But remember, look for that how many do you, does he need? Maximum, minimum, that kind of language really sets those off for you. So do check out the two videos on absolute value. That'll finish out the elementary algebra and it'll deepen your understanding of inequalities. I like the absolute value stuff too because, especially the first video, the just absolute value, because it really gets into picking numbers and conceptual stuff that hasn't been as, as thoroughly covered in these videos. But remember, there's a thorough section on that strategy, and throughout that, the elementary algebra section, we talk a lot about when you can mark off, when you can pick answers and stuff like that. It just all, all doesn't fit into videos. So check those out, hit the book, and 